What an absolute pleasure this is. Welcome back to New Zealand, Josh Home, Mike Schumann, thank you for joining us. Thank you. Now, guys, can I just start this by, um, I've got something to, that I want to address early on. Josh. Undress? Yeah, I, address. I undress. Josh, on. last time we spoke to you was about a month ago on uh, Zoom, and I, recall. I brought up this, this interview, right, from years ago. Now, as you can see from this picture that I'm holding up, it's a picture of me and you. You don't look happy with me in the photo, but that's not the main point. The main point is the shirt that you're wearing, a Rush Hour 3 shirt. You proceeded to tell us a story about Rush Hour 3, which was what? Which was that I started wearing it during press so that I could just say, did, did you realize that Rush Hour 2 was filmed in Paris? And I would say with total shock and awe, even though there's a giant Eiffel Tower on the shirts. But your shirt's good too in that one. So. But it was, it was your way of, if, if I'm correct, letting the people in the area that you work with know that you weren't enjoying this interview and it was time to wrap it up. No. And that's why it was your favorite shirt. <laughs> no, I now would that's like... That's what you're extrapolating it to. I would like to now... And you said it was one of your favorite shirts that was stolen, that was it, lost? It was, it was lost or well, stolen. I'd like to start this, Josh wow. Homme, with your very own brand new Rush Hour 3 shirt. That looks very brand new. That is yours. Hope, I think it should fit perfect size-wise, sir. The way all interviews should start with a gift for but, me. But um, that's not the only gift that I have. I have one for you as well. Oh, wow. Now you, Finally see, we get to match. you kind of fucked it up actually because you created a competition now. Now we I, don't. I'm not finished. Okay. I have one for myself. <laughs> and if I find myself not enjoying this interview, I'm going to bring up Rush Hour 3 <laughs> and how it was filmed in Paris, <laughs> at which point my people will conclude this interview. Well, yeah, that, it's, it, it, it is a good way to conclude an interview. And um, because it's such a Captain Obvious thing, yeah. uh, it really feels wonderful. You know, it's, such a, it's, a, it's an unknown variable. Who knows who will bring it up first? <laughs> yeah, exactly. The Russian roulette of Paris. <laughs> well, I hope you enjoy your new shirt, and I hope uh, you can wear it again as well. I'd love to see it on you one day and go, oh, yeah, that's our shirt. You know, it's, it's hard not to enjoy a gift this good. <laughs> hey, um, talking of Rush Hour 3, the movie. Still? Yep, just one more thing, Mike. Some things that are written on the internet are true, some things are not. Oh, I'm sorry if you've been asked this a million times, but we thought it was interesting to find out whether it's true. Were, is it true that you were in The Wedding Singer and that Adam Sandler gave you your first guitar? Is that true? Uh, half of that is true. Um, I was. But he gave me my second guitar, actually. So, so you're, you're yeah, kind of wrong. One plus one is two. One guitar <laughs> plus one guitar is yeah. two guitars. <laughs> um, so that is half true, I guess. Yeah. So the internet's full of half truths, <laughs> I, I reckon. Okay. T believe only half of it. Yeah. It is great to have you guys back once again, though. Um, Flu in Tuesday. What have you guys been doing? I know that. Usually PR is, uh, is on the agenda. Has that happened? Is it, is it happening today? What do we do pre-show? We're going today. We have to. I, I think we like it because it's, it's relatively empty. There's not a lot of developed down there. It's just sort of raw. Yeah. You know, the folks were talking to us about, uh, what's, the, what's, that, what's the island? Waiheke. Waiheke. Yeah. Oh, that sounds Why got a hickey, bro? That's, that sounds like my favorite shit ever, actually. <laughs> I'm a sucker for hickeys, man. So I don't, I don't really, I think the, the answer should be, why not hickey? And I, I, and I think the reason is I got to go pee <laughs> Um So I first saw you guys at the Big Day Out in the early 2000s, and you sort of played twice on that same bill. Um, I've seen you here with Crooked Vultures, Josh. I've seen Queens of the Stone Age three or four times since in that, uh, in that period. My observation, though, from talking to you last time and from watching clips online is that you guys really genuinely look to be enjoying it at the moment, this tour in particular. Would that be fair to say, more so than other tours? Um, speaking for myself, uh, I'm really enjoying myself on this, this records tour. Um, and... It, uh, it's not that I didn't enjoy myself before, it's just that playing always came with a certain intensity. And, uh, and also, uh, perhaps for me, it's, it's just taken years to just, honestly, just be yourself up there. 
Yeah. Uh, so I don't know. It's it's a it's just a combination of factors for me, where I feel at peace up there, you know, and um, and I'm certainly enjoying it. I don't know. I think we've all felt that way, and I think it has a lot to do with also making this record and 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 feeling a different kind of camaraderie. Even though I didn't think we could get any closer than we were, uh, somehow we have, and I think it's it's coming out every night when we're on stage. Well, I was talking to you, Mike, before Josh got here, and I found that quite interesting because you were saying that you guys genuinely have that great bond within a band that not all bands would be able to say, like, you spend all this time together on stage, but then off the stage, you spend the whole time together as well, which is quite unique. Yeah, I think it actually is a bit unique, you know, and uh, we don't really bullshit, and so it's not like we have this facade of what's happening you know I think there's so many bands that kind of they just don't and it's not like you need to get along it just happens to be that we do you know I, I find it strange people always find it strange that we <laughs> we vacation together too it's, yeah but I, I do think that the process of finding each other has you know has taken a long time and it's one puzzle piece snaps into place at a time and so it, it um the expectation wasn't to all have known each other at the same time and have that work, you know. Um, it's been, um, you know, it's been a long process. Your, um, your good friend, honorary bandmate Dave Grohl was just here recently with the Foo Fighters. They were three great shows, right? They always put on great live shows. There's a famous quote where Dave Grohl along the lines had said, Queens of the Stone Age are the best fucking band in the world. In fact, it's unfair when they start playing right? Um, which is a great thing to have said about you. What, Especially by Dave. What you know. do you want a Queens of the Stone Age concert to be for those of us that are going to see you or those of us that might be thinking about, oh, should I go see Queens in these three New Zealand shows? Well, for me, it has to be the only one like this tonight. And so I think the risk is what's most important. It has to risk. You know, I mean, risk nothing, get nothing. You know, we come from so far away and can't just do the same thing and say the same thing. It'd be like some job type job and uh, it cannot be like that. So I think we've had shows that are kind of complete train wreck, but somehow I, I, I love that too, you know. It's, it's how do you manage to create risk like after all this time? Does it just come naturally with how you play or? Well, I think in my case, I do, I do different things. To, I, I do different things to and with my body. I think also the mindset is to, to always shake the box. I mean, Mike, Mike and I painstakingly go through the sets. The you set know, list I mean, of you could explain. Mike could explain exactly in detail how we. The set list I was talking to Mike uh, have been unreal. Like as a Queens of Stone Age fan, been looking through the Australian set list, like dream stuff. Like for me personally, like the collections from the different songs from the albums that I haven't heard you play before, like I say to you, Mike, I appear missing that you played the other night. Like, I, f I love that song, never heard it live before, or God is in the radio, which I'm sure is, you know, a bit of a tip of the hat, obviously, with, with Mark and stuff a couple of years ago, but just finishing with songs for the deaf, like, they're ripping set lists. Yeah, they're all over the map. I think now with eight records um, to choose from, it becomes, harder and harder and we love all those songs so it's like i mean you know a lot of bands just go out and play you know the hits or the songs that people want to hear but for us it's like when we're playing every night it's like we want to make sure that we're enjoying ourselves as well and get to play our favorite songs and with five of us trying to choose it becomes in incredibly difficult but yeah and, and and we're because we have that volume of tunes it's like uh we can just take the set list, crumple it up, and turn it over to the audience for a while. Yeah. And so now the audience is prone to making signs and stuff to lobby for their... <laughs> yeah, you know, yeah. And they're lobbying for deep cuts nine yeah. times out of ten. And they're lobbying for songs that maybe 70% of the audience is like, I'm sorry, which one's that? <laughs> you yeah. know, especially in this modern Almost day. Almost becomes a competition who can who can have the cooler song or yeah, the and, deepest cut. Yeah, in a way to stump yeah. us from our yeah. own thing. And, <laughs> yeah. and it turns into like, you know, it reminds me of that feels important because it feels very nowish and like 
uh, like we want to hear this one now, and it's and uh, it's, it's about like giving away control of the show and then taking it back and wrestling it back, and and that sort of creates this this push and pull that is the dance of a show. And and you know, I grew up loving and playing with bands like Ween, going on tour with Ween, and Ween had so much of an impact on me that I cannot overstate how big an impact they had because they could play anything whenever they wanted. It didn't matter if it was a song that was comedic or a song that was serious. It was no fucking joke. They, it, was, it was deadly serious about how good they could play it. And I, and I just, I respect that. They're every band at one time. And I think our goal is to be... Like complete authenticity. Yeah, yeah well, it's, you never doubted whether it was real or not. And I think... You know, hopefully Dave's compliment really is saying you never doubt what we're yeah. you know, question whether it's real. You can be like, I don't like this. Yeah. And and that's totally fine. It's okay not to to like whatever that is, and we're in that category. But you can't doubt what we're bringing. You know, because because we fucking mean it. You know. I and I think that's you know, there's not a lot of things that fall into the rock and roll bin that are actually still out there. Yeah. And I don't really particularly care about that fact. Um, but I think we're definitely still out there because of that reality, you know? Um, I think that's part of the risk that you bring up, too. It's like when someone holds up a sign and says, play the song, and we, we do it, it's like, oh, shit, we haven't played this song in, you know, six months, six Some, years. Sometimes six years, sometimes And, like, more. is this going to be a train wreck, or are we going to pull it off? <laughs> and that's part of it for us, too. Yeah, I love it. No one had noticed your mistakes that you noticed, either. Um, you... But well, I think the mistakes are okay, yeah, actually, totally. because they're just sort of being vulnerable enough to yeah. be like, oh, that we tried. was, yeah, it's, it, that was interesting. Yeah. <laughs> so your guys' album, Villains, I thought we could play a quick game uh, of famous New Zealanders, and I just want you to tell me whether you think that they are a villain or a good guy, okay, just based on what they look like. People listening or watching will know who these New Zealanders are, you're doing it based purely on their I cannot wait looks. to judge these people only, simply by the photograph you chose. Only one is only one is non-subjective. Like only one is you can be right or wrong. First person that I'm showing is David Bain. Uh, he clearly looks like a serial killer, yeah. or, or, or or is he the guy that created? I mean, you you know that you brought him because of this mom sweater with a look that. That appears to be from court, where it's like 1,600 sheep were fucked this morning by, what's his name, David Blaine? Bain. <laughs> Plus his name's Similar. Bain. This is such a setup. He's probably the guy that started the children's hospital here. No, no. I'm, I'm going to give you a correct. No, I I'm wasn't give done. You a... Started the children's hospital here to murder as many children as he could. <laughs> Stop interrupting me. Villain, Who the fuck is he? villain or good guy? Your second person. Are New you Zealand? not going to say? Is that the no, same uh, guy? You're correct. You're correct. Is that you? Uh, this. Uh, no, about... that's not me. Um, Roger Farrelly is okay. the second person. Come on, Mike. Right. This Please, is a politician man. looking for like a makeover. In fact, why is he actually doing that? <laughs> <laughs> As, I suppose that's Pihar too. <laughs> Which sounds like a video game, Pihaw 2. <laughs> and it, what it does is it takes a leap further than Pihaw 1. Wait, who the guy, who the, who's this politician? This is Roger Farrelly. He is um, the co-host on our radio show. Oh. Yeah. Uh, you know, that, so now I get it. He's doing like a boy band joke pose on the beach. Correct. Right. Okay. Third New Zealander, villain or good guy, Winston Peters. I don't like the way he's looking at me. I'm gonna go with <laughs> Frankly, I don't like the way he's looking at Mike either. And you know what's weird is that, uh, you know, this is such a setup for us to lose. I, I think it's uh, really, thank you I, for I doing this. I honestly think you can only win. Hold I on, I just got to no, put this on. No, he's reaching for the Russia R3 shirt. No. Were you, were you aware that this man was born in Paris on the Eiffel Tower? No, no. It's happening. Don't it's those a, cranes over there it resemble like the, Eiffel the Tower? Awful Tower? No. Okay, one last one, one last one. This New Zealander, Brian. Wait, who, is, who is the... This guy is a politician, Winston yeah, Peters. Long-serving I mean, long politician. He, Very he, polarizing in this country. Th that guy definitely went to law school because it's written all over his he face. It, hold it up again. This is my advice to everyone. Um, let your cheeks go loose so the stick <laughs> will drop out. <laughs> there you go, man. 
I might just move on from those. I don't want to. I don't want you to bring up like that. You know, we're we're we rush like to go to pee ha, but that guy needs to take a poo ha. <laughs> <laughs> Which I think is, you know, an indigenous word yeah. for get fucked, mate. Yeah. <laughs> so, if you don't mind, a couple of quick questions from the listener, the radio listener. Okay, well, these now are I have to the see one the listener. last picture you, that you were going to use. Well, I can show you these quickly. This one, a quick villain or not, what did you make of this New Zealander? This was um, Brian Tamaki, is his Tamaki. name. Tamaki, so, oh, oh, little Tommy. He, he, you know, he seems okay. He's the villain. Is he? What's he? What's his villain? His he owns. Uh, he runs like one of those churches that takes all the money from the vulnerable and flies first class everywhere around the world. And he's that guy. You know. Yeah. He was the villain. I know and he's he's rather underdressed. Yeah. I don't trust any Gonzo type characters. <laughs> this is. I'm now holding up a picture of Thingy, a famous Thingy television pansexual uh, spokes thing. <laughs> <laughs> what a successful round of villain or good guy. Question. We just said villains no matter what. <laughs> I tried to be nice to the one guy, but of course, yeah. know, he's like, God wants me to travel <laughs> like this so everyone can begin to eat a dick in his name. Let's get started on this jet. These are, um, these are questions from the listener of the radio station. They're all in bands, okay? So you guys are well-versed to answer these. Three questions. First question. Hi, I'm a singer in our band, but the others don't think I have the chops and can't sing very well, but it's my fucking band. What should I do? That is from Rog in Oriwa. Start a new band, get rid of them, I don't know. You know, I believe heavily in firing yourself first. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I really, I always have. Uh, sometimes the bad tooth in any mouth is you, you know? Great quote. Be great on a t-shirt. Like the Rush Hour 3 one. Did you know that that quote takes place at the dentist? Hi guys. I have a bit of a problem with falling for drummers in bands, well, in fact, anyone in bands, and it never seems to go well for me. What should I do? That is from Mel in West Auckland. You know, uh, how, does it have an age or likeness on the photo? It does not. <laughs> then I'm hesitant to say I'm a drummer. Maybe we should get together and talk about it. <laughs> My number is 555-72024-1, postal code ZXRT. Uh, uh, last question from the listener. Um, hi, I don't want to be in the band anymore. The others are holding me back. I have the voice of an angel. What should be my next step? Um. That's from Mulls in Hearn Bay. <laughs> this is your next step, a step toward Jesus. If you have, excuse me. Hi, my name is Joshua Hami from the band Queens of the Stone Age. Do you have a voice like an angel? <laughs> this man would love your help. <laughs> He wants to get the word out about the big guy upstairs. <laughs> now, a lot of our listeners are proud dads. You're a proud dad, I'm a proud dad. Do you have any parental advice, Josh, for new young parents, new young dads? Okay. What would you do Yes, I actually advice? do have, <laughs> I have, I have advice, advice for any freshly minted dad. When your wife is breastfeeding, go, uh, and just go grab a pillow and put it under her arm and give her a glass of water without her asking, and she won't leave you. <laughs> She'll still resent you because her body's been hijacked and you're just walking around doing the same shit. How dare you? And that's something that she has to go through and you're not even paying attention to that, which makes you kind of a cunt in a way. But when you... <laughs> when you... When you uh, and remember the, the age-old secret about being a, a good parent, be, creating a, a space consistent enough for someone to fail and feel comfortable enough to get up and try again. Great advice. This has been Parenting with Josh. <laughs> I only have two questions left. Oh, for fuck's sake. <laughs> really, after some fucking gold like that? That was good. That was a really nice way I to think end. This, I think this has gone from radio to free to go. <laughs> See you later. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to leave you there. I'm not, going to waste, not, I'm not going to waste any more of your time. I really appreciate the fact that you guys had a great chat with us. I am a massive Queens of the Stone Age fan. and I've I had a great really chat with excited. you every time we've had a chat, so good on you, mate. Thank you, Josh. Yes. I really appreciate it. Thanks, Thanks Mike. I, yeah, genuinely excited for tonight, man.